the C4 Corvette is often singled out as the worst Corvette generation. It doesn't feel nearly as modern as the C5 or C6, nor does it have the classic looks of a C2 or C3. In fact, the entire era of the C4, which was 1984 through 1996, has never been looked at fondly as a great period for automotive design. But that has all changed in recent years. With children from the 80s and 90s now earning bigger salaries and having some disposable income to throw around, cars from this era are now starting to be worth big money. As an example, a pristine 1994 Toyota Supra just sold for over $170,000 at auction. This phenomenon is currently being referred to as the Radwood Effect. Radwood being a popular car show dedicated to cool cars from the 80s and 90s. Cars from this period will all soon start to appreciate as cars from the 60s and 70s did earlier, but it's not too late to catch the Z4 ZR1 on the upswing. If you want to buy a cheap Corvette, the C4 has always been the best choice. The ZR1 is the ultimate pinnacle of the C4 generation, so you will have to pay significantly more for one, but not too much more. Even the most pristine examples we're talking fewer than 10,000 miles on the odometer can be found for less than 35,000. Want one with closer to 100,000 miles? You're probably looking at around 15,000 if you can find one. Considering that the ZR1 sold for over 66,000 by its last year in 1995, we think 20 or 30,000 is a pretty reasonable cost of entry to be crowned as king at the next 90s car show. Who knows, maybe the ZR1 will eventually appreciate back to its $66,000 price tag. So what makes a ZR1 any different from a normal C4 Corvette? Back in 1986, GM acquired UK automaker Lotus and set out to use the company's handling experience to create the ultimate European sports car killer. Lotus went to town making the Corvette as good as it could be, which involved creating a new V8 engine called the LT5 using advanced features like aluminum block, four overhead camshafts, and 32 valves. This engine was so advanced, GM soon found out that the Corvette plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky was unable to produce it, so it had to be outsourced to the Mercury Marine Corporation. The result was 375 horsepower from 5.7 liters, which was later up to 405 horsepower with new cylinder heads, exhaust system, and valve train. In its day, the ZR1 was one of the fastest cars in the world with a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of just 4.4 seconds and a top speed of over 180 miles per hour. The biggest downside to owning a Corvette was its cheap interior which never felt as nice as a European sports car. Modern Corvettes have come closer to eliminating this issue, but there's not getting past the C4's clunky 90s interior controls. The C4's cabin looks incredibly retro by today's standards, giving it a unique cool factor. The ZR1 was only offered as a fastback coupe, meaning it had a large glass hatchback that opened up to reveal around 13 cubic feet of cargo space. For the time, the LT5 engine wasn't even particularly terrible on fuel with a EPA rating of 17 miles per gallon in the city and 25 miles per gallon on the highway. Combine the practicality and efficiency with the ZR1's legendary dependability and you've got the perfect collector car that you could even drive daily. The C4 Corvette may not be the most sought after model, but we believe the ZR1 is special enough to be secluded from that stigma. Chevy only built 6,939 of them during a six year run, making them rare enough to be collectible, but not so rare that it's impossible to find parts. Judging by the skyrocketing prices and popularity of the 80s and 90s cars, we don't think it'll be long before ZR1 values start to come up which is why now is the time to buy.